Welcome, Libra, to your January 2021 tarot reading and forecast. It's great to see you. Great to see the subscribers back again. We have great fun here, don't we? On our channel, it's different. It's good. Now, you may know, or if you haven't uh, seen it, there is an annual reading which I have published, and you can see that uh, on the playlist, which is on the channel. And that will probably run for about 15 or 20 minutes or something like that. But now we're going to do an in-depth reading for you for January. By the way, if you would like to have a, um, a personal clairvoyant reading with me face to face then just check out the information that's in the description box below and you can see how easy it is for that to happen wherever you may be living in the world but let's get five cards now shall we and we'll see what there is in store for you there's the emperor that's a good card for you the knight of swords the fool central energy interestingly the Four of Wands. A lot of Venus in that, I think, is what I'm getting, which is your planet, of course. And there is Judgment. Well, let's have a look at the pictures on the cards, which are beautifully painted. And I'll do the reading for you. Fascinating spread of cards. Now, just a reminder, there is a 2021 yearly reading available. Just check out the playlist on my channel. It runs for about 20 minutes, I think. And um, or you could search for me, Libra 2021 Nigel, and that will take you to it. Also, next month's monthly reading in depth will be provided on the 6th of January at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Let's see what there is here. Three major arcana in a diagonal. Let's look first of all at this one here, which is the Fool. The one who walks without fear, the spirit of the ether, very much associated with air, as there is an ancient biblical Hebrew letter associated with this energy called Aleph, which is which has no sound unless it's placed with another letter. Also, the planet Uranus around here and the astrological sign. Well, I actually think it's the universe at whole. This is about um, esoterically, this is the passage of your soul through life. Look at these butterflies here, the monarch butterflies. They do a migration, don't they, annually, the monarch butterfly. And that is analogous to the migration of the soul through life in the short spans of time that we are here. Uranus as the planet. Well, Uranus is freedom loving, also rebellious in a sense. Now this card I think represents both father and mother. And not in the abstract form of these ideas. This isn't a confusion with me, but it's a deliberate identification of the male and female principles of which the spirit is contained in its journey through life here in matter. This is talking to you about an openness, trust, and being ready to take risks. I think you'll have courage to stand your ground, a great desire for freedom and independence. You'll have a great degree of creativity, I think. There's an enormous amount of potential around here because this is the first card of the Tarot the potential of going through each of the major arcana after that and the possibility of just as this fool is making a leap here the possibility of taking something of a quantum leap in relation to something a breakthrough in relation to something and listening to your heart's voice new beginnings which is not surprising because it is the beginning of the new year and i think it's also about you acting with without any malice here. Now there's something else I think which this energy wants to say to you and it is this that at this time there is nothing you cannot be, there is nothing you cannot do, there is nothing you cannot have. You are the most magnificent, the most remarkable, the most splendid being God has ever created. For who could reject such wondrous magnificence? But you do not know who you are, 
and you think you are a great deal less. You are your own rule maker, and you are the only one who can assess how you are doing. All you see in the world is your idea about it. Life will take off for you when you choose for it to. An idea becomes a thought, a thought becomes a word. Say it out loud. Words have power and they reverberate all throughout eternity. A word becomes an action. And if you are going to do it, start and go all the way. Do it. Do it. Seize the opportunity that is in front of you now. Rejoice in it and let no power on earth take it from you. There really is the start of something new and spontaneous, I think, for you. The beginning of a journey into the unknown, which is full of potential for you. Open up your life and have the faith that you can create what you want. It may well be that you want to break free of the usual routine of life. Look upon life as the fool does. Be joyful and empty again. Well, let's have a look at the card that's up that you drew first, which is the son of the morning, the chief among the mighty. Uh, it's quite a, he looks like an emperor, doesn't he? The red dragonfly and red clothing to me signify the suits of fire. The pentagram here in this ring, I think, signifies earth. The blue on the hilt of his sword represents water or cups and this sword which is quite phallic that also represents I think air in the case that we have here now the emperor well this is really mm, Mars ruling Aries with the sun exalted and I think that during this time you may find that you are primarily concerned with power or control over other people maybe even over yourself I think that people are going to see you as being a natural leader and organizer during this time. Your willpower and judgment, which you have, the judgment which you have developed through your life experience, that is going to be positively exercised and you'll be using willpower to make things happen. There is a success coming to you and this success is the result of your self-discipline and application. Ah, I think you're going to be quite a rational thinker. Interestingly, I think status is going to be important to you during this period, as is material security and stability. And you might find that you are somewhat volatile. You could be quite fiery. I don't think you're going to be passive at all during this period. There's a lot of creativity around here again, the, and the urge for action. And you're going to have a sense of adventure or want to try new things. And also, you'll be looking to bring order and structure into your environment, I think. The establishment of a, a sense of routine. And it's possible, I think, that you'll be taking a firm stand with somebody. Possibly also a promotion um, for those who are in the, the job arena. This is a really good time for, for a change or a new beginning. And I'm not surprised because this other card is sitting here right in the middle of the, of the spread. There are no coincidences, are there? So trust your energy and move with it. And maybe ask yourself, what revitalization does your life need now? Are there steps you would like to take to make this happen. Examine yourself critically, especially in regard to your relations with people whom you might consider to be subordinates of yours, or even people who you might think are bosses or superiors, and say this to yourself. I enjoy initiating projects. I value and honor my leadership ability. I am a responsible person. I trust my power. I rule by serving and I serve by ruling. Now, not surprisingly, this card finishes the diagonal here. Very, very, very strong message coming through all the way through here. This is the spirit of the primal fire. Wow, it's very red, isn't it? 
A lot of Pluto around here, a lot of Pluto, and Pluto of course at the moment is in Capricorn in um, ordinary astrology, so there is a lot of, a lot of adjustment going on and I think that this is a time where you'll be making adjustments to your life where things will be bringing things into balance um, for you. There's going to be a decision I think that you're going to make that's going to have a major impact on your life such as a lifestyle or a career or some but a, a decision which which may not even seem to be important at the time but you will look back on the time to this time and you'll say do you know what I remember when I did that and and incidentally the decision is one which is good and good for you and making your life go forward very often this can speak of in this position in particular life-changing experiences which make you think wow I really do want to make sure I live life every day this is saying to you that it is time for you to move on after seeing the bigger picture. And so it's suggesting to you, I think, that you need to take some time out and have a look at the bigger picture, really. It's a natural period of growth and shedding of things which no longer serve you. I'm looking at the fire around this card and I'm just moved to say, Burn me, O flame, thou art the breath of my beloved, the body of her embrace, the passion of his seeding. I think it'd be quite discriminating and discerning during the period. And you know what? You will be open to criticism. You're not going to take any criticism personally, because I think there's a period of some critical self-analysis going on here. As you go through the pro process of closing off some things, resolving some things, and again making definitive action, taking definitive action on things. You are being challenged, I think, to drop your worm's eye view, to see things from a higher plane. When you have recognized greater time spans and other contexts, which you are increasingly ready to do, by the way, you will then tend more and more to observe things in their beingness, to see things free from evaluations. Which methods might you use to gain a deeper insight into yourself and deeper wisdom? Say this to yourself at this time. I observe people and situations objectively and fairly. I value the combination of my qualities and characteristics. I, uh, I honour the unlimited well of creativity within me to express in family and social and career settings. God is the unknown, the mysterious. The more that I know that I don't know, the closer I am to the divine. Now, so there are decisions that you are making, some of them quite, at least one, quite important, I think. What's this card here? This is the Four of Wands. The Lord of Perfected Work is what I would call it. Well, the image is quite straightforward, I think. What is more interesting, I think, for you is the astrology of the card, which is Venus ruling the third decan of Aries, 10th of April to the 19th of April. Venus in Aries. Well, Aries is ruled by Mars, isn't it? And yet we have Venus coming into Aries. Now, Venus, as you will recall, rules two planets, two signs, doesn't it? It rules Taurus, and it rules your sign of Libra. Now, I'm looking at this tree here, which is growing up into the air. And so I'm going to assign Venus to the air sign of Libra. So Venus is going to travel from your sign to the opposite sign of the zodiac wheel. 180 degrees away, where Venus is going to be in detriment, because Venus is in detriment in Aries, and she's sitting next to Mars. Now, Venus is the planet of love, beauty, of relationship. She's also the planet of money, 
and the attraction of material benefits. But she's in detriment, is what we would first think. And therefore, those powers relating to relationship and money and beauty and joy will be diminished. I don't think that that is the case here. Rather than that, I think what happens is that when Venus moves, she moves 180 degrees away, she finds herself sitting next to Mars, Mars which is that destructive very often, unruly, alpha male, hi hyper male figure. That can be quite impersonal sometimes. But I think what happens is that Venus exercises her womanly charms on Mars and she subdues him. She tames him. And you Libra women who are widely recognized as the most beautiful women in the Zodiac, you understand what it's like to tame another person by the use of your own personal charm, don't you? There is opposites sitting there, Venus and Mars. And I think what's happening is that there's going to be some sort of opposites attract energy going on here. And by that I mean that you may well find that you are interested in something that you have never been interested in before, or having looked at it previously, go, no, nah, I'm not interested in doing something like that, that holds no appeal for me. But now you find yourself interested in pursuing it. Or it could be a person that, you, that you're looking at now, and you say, actually, now that I'm looking at them again, I actually find that there is something appealing about the person. Now, it doesn't just have to be romantic, but it could be something about their character or what it is that they do or what it is that they stand for. The point is, is that previously there was a thing or a person that seemed to be the polar opposite of you, but this is the time now when you're going to find that you are actually attracted to them. This is also the time when you have a green light to success. The foundations are being set for the first stage to completing things. Completing things off, which is what this was also talking about here. It may even relate to somebody setting up a new home or something like that. I think you might find also, with Venus coming into the picture here, into Aries, you might find that you have an emotional idea to go in a new direction. The emotional comes from Venus and the new direction is coming from Aries. Or in particular, you could find that you have a desire. One part of you may want to go in that direction while another part of you wants to go in this direction, the opposite parts of you. Or you may just want to stay where the trunk of the tree is and do nothing at all. Don't be surprised if you go through this sort of set of contradictory thoughts and desires. Now there is something I think that needs to be completed despite your desire to move on to a new person or a new thing. Now this could relate to work, it could relate to new relationships, or it could relate to a new dynamic within an existing relationship. All right? I think something beautiful is making its way into your relationships. You may f notice it first as the ground rules are called into question and are discussed openly. Clarifying the old is a prerequisite for a new oneness, a new beginning. Are you prepared to accept your partner as he or she is in spite of your differences? And ask yourself what, what areas might be in urgent need of clarification or resolution. If there is some tension between you and someone else at this time, then now is the good time to clarify and resolve the interaction and complete the old. Say this to yourself, completing the old frees me for the new. So let's see what the final card says, shall we? Is it the final card? Yes, it is. And it is this, the Knight of Swords or the Prince of the Chariots of the Winds. Now, let's have a look at the, at the swords here. First of all, I get a lot of Aquarius around here. 
also have a lot of Capricorn. I think they're people who could be important to you during this time. Now, although it's described as a, a knight, they can, of course, relate uh, the, the trend of gender um, uh, fluid. So they can be females as well. But I'll refer to it as a man for the obvious reason. And this is a man, probably a young man, I think, who you'll know. There, it has things to say to you, but there are... It may also be a person here who is quite an intellectual, full of ideas and plans, really quite clever, but a bit unstable, I think. Someone who is elusive, someone who can from time to time be quite domineering, and someone who can be very impressionable. Now, as this knight here, he's air, and he's in the suit of swords, that's air, so he's the airy part of air. So what we have is air everywhere, air everywhere. Lots of air, activity, and not plans. Now, although his, his, well, I'll call it his chariot, this bird, this owl, is flying along without any difficulty, notice he doesn't have any, he doesn't seem to have hold of any reins on the bird itself, so the, the movement in any direction at all is, is actually quite accidental. It's as if the person is not in control at the moment. And what they need is, they need somebody who they can regard as being a, a credible leader and mentor to sort them out. Because when his creative process works, it works well. But at the moment, it's not grounded in anything. And so anything that, that this guy produces isn't really fruitful. It does refer for you, though, I think, to creative thinking and cutting through all entanglements and becoming free of limited ideas and models, and you'll be having a clear perception about what is going on. You will have lots of ideas, I think, during this period, but your challenge, I think, is going to make sure that they are made tangible, that you don't just let one idea tumble over the other and move from idea to idea on the basis that any idea that you have is good, but rather make sure, stick to something, focus energy and make sure that you produce things, get some some points up on the board. Uh, th look, I think you will be very independent during this period, private. Some people might think that you are difficult to get to know, you know, or that you lack emotional warmth or empathy. I can't believe that's the case, but that's just the feeling that I'm getting here. But it does, I think, it does, I think, maybe show the need to slow down and analyze your thoughts to see if something practical can be gained from them. What you must do is free yourself from whatever limits your mind and spirit. Be sure you express your ideas and plans in a way that other people are able to, to understand and, and accept their opinions humbly. This is said that you're going to be open to criticism during this period without taking things personally, so accept their opinions humbly. Your thinking may be way ahead of its time at the moment, but you can adjust to make your vision workable in the present without sacrificing anything. Maybe ask yourself what beliefs, feelings, relationships, or programmed ideas do you allow to limit yourself? And say to yourself that my creative possibilities have no limits because they really don't during this period. What a fantastic spread of cards for you, Libra. Good job. That's the way it is for you this month. Well, I loved spending that uh, time with you then. Uh, what a great, uh, what a great month it looks like it's going to be for you. And don't you deserve it? You certainly do. Of, of anybody, you deserve the good things that are coming into your life. Now remember, and remember this one thing always, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.